Good morning and welcome to WT3C's English Sunday service. Uh, before we start the service, let's take a moment to prepare our hearts uh, for a time of uh, musical worship. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that once again you've brought us here um, in our busy schedules and in these hectic times, Lord, that we can come here and uh, worship and praise you for the many great things that you've done through us and in us, Lord. Um, and although we are still unable to, to meet um, in person and we long for that day that we can once do that again, uh, Lord, I thank you that you've given us the tools and um, the resources to continue to worship together as a community um, afar, Lord. Uh, Lord, I pray that as we prepare ourselves for this uh, sermon, Lord, I pray that you will open our hearts and our ears to listen and um, intently to the message that will be given to us, Lord. And yeah, Lord, that our worship and praise will be pleasing to your ears. I pray all this in the most precious name. Amen. Our first song is In Christ in Love. Thank you. 
just last Oh God, how I need You are still runs deep Your grace is more Your grace is found Is where
to fly. Digging deep to know our father's heart. Into the world we're reaching out to show them who you are. Living love, through God we thirst for more of you. Fill our hearts, flood our souls with what just to know you answer me, know we lift your name on high. Shine like the sun makes darkness run We know we were made for so much more than ordinary. Faith unsinkable, love unstoppable, anything is possible. Joy unspeakable, faith unsinkable, love unstoppable, anything is possible. Joy unspeakable, faith unsinkable, love unstoppable, anything is possible. Just to know you and to make. You know we lift your name on high. Shine like the sun, make darkness run and hide. We know we were made for so much more than ordinary life. It's time for us to more than just Now's the time for offering prayer, so let's take a moment to bow our heads and pray for the offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we can come here and communicate with you and talk with you as our Heavenly Father, Lord, um, and that in these moments of despair and uncertainty, both in our own country and around the world, Lord, uh, we can find uh, peace and rest knowing that you are in control and that you remain sovereign, Lord. Um, but Lord, that doesn't mean that we stand still and just wait for you to do your action, Lord. Lord, I pray that with the offering that you've given us and that we've given to the church, Lord, that you will help us continue to use the gifts and the resources that we have to support our community to the best of our abilities, Lord. And that through this, that your name will be glorified and your name will be um, praised in our community. I pray all this most precious name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Today's scripture reading will be read from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, have received a faith as precious as ours. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God. Good morning, everyone. Today's scripture reading will be read from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, have received a faith as precious as ours. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. 
Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear the word of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the WTCCC online worship this morning. For those who join us for the first time, please do drop us a line at welcome at wtccc.ca so that we can keep in touch with you and also give you some updates of our events. Uh, I'd like to highlight a couple of uh, announcements for you this morning. Uh, we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper next week, July the 4th, during the English Sunday service. Please prepare the ordinance in your homes and the focus is on Christ and what he has done for, for us. Uh, please note that Pastor Andrew will be on vacation leave from June 29th through July the 4th. Let's read the monthly verse together. This month, the verse is from John 14, verse 21. We'll read it twice. Whoever has my commands and keeps them in the one who loves me, the one who loves me will be loved by my father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. John 14, verse 21 for the intercessory prayer. Please bow our heads and we'll pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are at your presence today, this morning, and be able to worship you. May your spirit to guide us so that we can understand your words and to follow your teaching. We like to give thanks for the decline of the numbers of the COVID cases in Canada and especially in Ontario. Please continue to give us our government the wisdom and the insight so that uh, as our community around us are reopening, give us a, an alert mind as our own church is preparing for the live streaming of our Sunday worship. Keep our brothers and sisters safe as we continue to follow the government guidelines. May you have mercy for the people of India and Brazil as they are still struggling with the pandemic. May the, we pray that the medical supply will reach the people who are mostly needed. Give them the, the frontline workers, the endurance and faith in fighting this pandemic. We also like to pray for their salvation. May your word be able to reach those who are lost in this troubled situation. Give them the comfort and hope only you can provide so that the people in India and Brazil can recover from this pandemic. 
Dear Father, we also like to pray for the safety and wisdom for our missionaries and their families, local and abroad. Give them the wisdom during this time, since many doors are closed during the pandemic. Open other channels so that they are able to continue to reach out to those people you loved so much. We thank you for the continuous faith in you and may your name be glorified. We pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Let's read the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believed in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believed in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrections of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let's pray before we share the message. Father God, grant me clarity in proclaiming the truth of your word and edify your church through this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we'll go to share a passage based on 2 Peter 1, 1 to 11. And the title for the message is Let's Grow in Christ. So, how do you define spiritual growth? And this is all, this is everything this passage is talking about. The authors of Peter try to encourage his audience to grow as they are living in a very dangerous, very unclear situations. And they need to know how to discern. And they need to live up to it. They are not allowed to live in any way. They, they are encouraged to grow. So, from the first day of our conversions, do we really understand the meaning of spiritual growth? Do we understand the calling to receive Jesus Christ? And on the same note, we can relate it to the theme of spiritual growth. Like the pictures I have been chosen for this morning, we see there's a plant, few plants. The plants we see, they are no longer in a seed form. It has grown into a plant with leaves. Maybe even later they have fruit. Growth would involve change. It should not be the same as the beginning. Like the plant, if it is a seed all the time, we'll think that there is no life changing. This is where the passage is starting from. Simon Peter, a servant of apostle of Jesus Christ, said to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ have received a faith as precious as ours. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And who are these audience to this passage? And obviously they are like us. They are saved, they are called, and receive the wonderful salvations. So they've been like put into a category. They, are, they have been saved by their sin. They are called into a different kinds of life. And they would like to receive 
the wonderful salvation because of God's grace. And they are so also being so blessed that they have received more and more things, especially the knowledge of God and Jesus. And this is the direct relationship between knowledge and growth. And something like us, like we have been blessed with knowing God, we know how to worship God, and especially we have Bible to be with us, and then we could have God's word, and that will help us to grow. And this knowledge is directly come from grace and peace. And if there is no knowledge, that is no life changing. So I guess that to kick up the, the whole discussions of spiritual growth is almost telling us that there is knowledge, but that not necessarily must be some life changing. As verse 3 and 4 said, His divine power has given us everything we need for godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His glory and goodness. Through this, He has given us His very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruptions in the world caused by the evil desire. So this is the result of the life transformations. To do that will help us to having escape the corruptions in the world caused by the evil desire. And by doing that, we may participate in the divine nature, which is so good, which is talk, we can summarize this word into godly. In that way, we could be like God or even more. So this is the spiritual life timelines. We are walking away from our human nature, evil desire. In the end, we are walking close to the divine natures of God. And what is the reality of growth? It is a way that involves changes. So you, at least we know, you can see the calling kinds of like helping us move from one side to the other side. And we could see that by locations, we are no longer the same. We are no longer stay at the same locations. And it is a way to involve changes. And it may not touch a lot of quantities. Instead, it will involve a lot in qualities. So we can truly see that. So this is like, but as have, I have said that, like the knowledge could enable us to know, but you may find it as a missing piece to cause us to move to the godly quality. And it does not man, it does not mention it is easy. It does not mention that there is no struggle. It does not mention change in directions and repentance. So like well, a lot of times that when we go through Bible studies and when we read the scriptures, sometimes we may find that it's so challenging. And then as we are obedient students, we find that sometimes we would like to follow, but we find it very difficult. And like I'm just saying that this whole changing doesn't say it is easy, doesn't say it is uh, come naturally. It needs a lot of effort. And who are these people which the authors of Second Peter is talking to? And he said, His divine power has given us everything we need for the godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. And there are, they are who has been called and by His own glory and grace. So easily we will pass the word call, but this is so important. This is very, very, very important. And they have been called to experience this change. And I'm going to emphasize and try to see who, how special about this call. And it's something like us. And the person who make the call change things. So we have been called, and that must be a person who called us out, and we know that that is God. And he do it out by his own glory and goodness. And many times we related the word callings to full-time ministry. 
once they have been, they have their own career. And however, due to the calling, the person who will choose to abandon his own directions and choose to fall into God's directions. Of course, this is the only examples of calling. The elders of Second Peter said there are people who will receive the calling from God, and they are called to become a different person too. So similar to what we have put into our lines, there is a calling, and then we will be called to become a different people. And the key things are that the calling is not mainly focused on where we are going to. Also. The God who do the call, He has the power and authority to move us and to change the direction. So sometimes we just so focusing on us to do the moving, but no, and we we so blessed us to know that this is somebody who called us out, and He is the person who really have the authority, who can do it. So it's all like so. This is all talking about grace. It's not talking about us. It's about us to move. Frankly, we just don't have the momentum and power to move. But this is God who really do the call, and how special it is. And this is the person who has.、Uh, I can I can think about a very good illustrations on this dynamics of calling. It especially helps us to us understand how important this this concept is. And the 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 story is like there's a person who has been in prison. In order to get this person out. We may need to go through many legal procedures. Ultimately, if we could prove that person is innocent, we can get that person out of the prison. Otherwise, that persons will need to stay in the prison for the sentencing. If there is a person, is an outside person. There's a person has been in the prison, but that is an outside person who can skip. All these kinds of legal procedures and trials, and the judge will pronounce that person innocent. That person will no longer need to stay in prison; is free to go. So, it could be like this person. So we can understand that if you would like to call some people out. You really need to have some authority. You can bypass things at least. You don't need to go into a conventional way to tackle with the situation because those things will not enable us to call some people out from some place like a prison, and that persons need to willing to do it, and then they they really actually doing it. So who can be that per power per powerful person? I mean, I don't know his name or position. However, that particular person must have this kind of soul. Authority and jurisdiction. So if he tackle with legal, so he could be like a JP or some 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 people or the judge. If in this case when we're talking about sin and then we're talking about a new life, and that persons need to have their powers to tackle with sin and death, and he can win, he can live over all this, and that person can enable another persons to get out from this penalty. This could be God, and we know that this is why the the authors of Second Peter just so emphasizing we have been called out because we just being so loved, and then we're just being so empowered, and God just prepare all the salvations for us and just move us out. But this is not just out; He just out, moving out, call us by His own glory and give us all this. Godly life, and so it's almost like a momentum to move on. When I think about this, I recall two examples. I think I think about the prodigal son mentioned by Jesus in the parable. He lost this、um, this youngest son. He lost himself、um, in a really poor environment. However, he received many undeserved rewards when he was welcomed by his father. So this is the end of the the story. And once he would like to repent and went back to his father's arm, and he is just kind of moving out from this dungeon, very poor environment, and his father just enable him to do it. He cannot get out from it, but just so that 
his father just have all these kinds of love he would like to do he has the power it's almost like the persons I mentioned in the illustration another example is for the people I know who has been suffer suffering from addictions for a long time they may go through rehabs trying to get out of the addictions but still cannot get through and in the end when they surrender themselves to gospel they get healed and they do be able to walk out from the trap freely and this is my first-hand experience like we've been walking with them as a human being maybe I have never been to addict like uh, went through the addictions like what they have been went through even I as a, as a pastor when I go with them I cannot get them out from their addictions no matter how willing they are they still being trapped but by the times that they go to gospel they know about God and frankly they just have the powers to come out they just need to they, they have the, the, the energy to fight and they have the power to be free and they are no longer being trapped by their addictions back to the scriptures the scripture said the divine power has given us all everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness God who has the power really do this give called us out from there to here by his glory and goodness and in the end he intends to give us everything to be more like him so I'm just trying to repeat this because I just want to let you know that this is like asking us to moving us from a sin dungeons to anywhere and then we can do whatever we want and in the end like the timeline I have mentioned he wants us to be more like him and God has the power to do that because he is not below the power of sin and lust nobody could do that except God and he is able to call people out and he is able to change our identity I guess like this is the one of the things that we need to emphasize on calling sinners no sinners being trapped no longer trapped and I guess that the key thing is not just so about the location is the identity we're no longer the same person and God is able to change our identity Jesus says you are no longer the same and this is the hope we have been say we are called to get out to be a new person and how can this related to our daily life it's almost like we stand in front of Lord every single day when you do the devotions we reflect we repent and we could be like a new person since we have been having the new identity we are moving and we are growing daily we call to do that every single day we need to practice as I have mentioned the seed is no longer seed and it has become a plant with leaves like the rest of the scriptures say for this very reason make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness mutual affections and to mutual affections love for if you possess these qualities in increasing measures they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ he sounds like a chemistry formula formula it starts from faith and end with love to me I do not think the sequence is that important in fact there are seven or eight things they seem unrelated however they are all in the chain when you have goodness you may have some natures of godliness and self-control so they can come at the same time so they have a little bit of each other and they are all good things and all of them related to spiritual filled lives instead of indulgence lives I will focus on the key words here in this passage 
and it said, make every effort and add. It describes the situation of intentionals to add. In the beginning, there should be less or non godly in related. It could be more sin related. It, it could be more sin related. In the end, after the long intentional process, we add so many, so many godly ingredients to it. And all the ingredients is through God's grace. And like what I said, is by we have God's knowledge. I can relate it to this suggestion. The author has put it up to my weightlifting experience. I start with uh, a two pounds dumbbell after a while because of the hard work i have built some muscle and would find the two pound dumbbell too light and it is funny experience to see how i add more weights to the dumbbell to challenge myself of course the motivation and courage to try is the key in the end i would see so thrilled and happy to enjoy the result because i can carry heavy stuff and i can recover and recuperate really, really fast. And that's and that is the change. And on the same note, all the godly elements could be challenging to us in the beginning. However, if we preserve, we could grow in a very different person when we apply all this intentionally. So I guess it's not like we just have the knowledge. I guess that just the beginning of it, knowing it, but having adding all these kinds of things each time, it could be difficult at first, and it will come, and then you will start to practice it, and then you will apply it, and then you will be look like Christ more eventually. Philippians three twelve said, "Not that I have been obtained all this, or I have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that." which Christ Jesus hold on me. And what was Paul trying to say? Paul tried to get into a plan which Christ has prepared for him. He has not mentioned specifically what the plan was. However, the plan would not come naturally without trying hard. The plan may seem easy or complicated. However, everyone must serve wholeheartedly without hesitation pertaining to their own self. Paul experienced the calling from Jesus at the role of Damascus. He has been called out of the role of persecuting Christ to preaching Christ. And this is not an easy role, but he tried his very best to accomplish, which also matched so well to his new identity, which God has called him to. So he cannot be the same anymore, and he has been called, and he has been changed. Another passage from Paul, Ephesians 2.10, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Paul mentions that that is a project plan for each one of us, since this is the plan of God. I need to make myself ready whenever we are being called. Since we have a plan in our life, we are no longer the same person. We are first to accomplish it. And it seems like that is almost like a void. And if I, it, it could be like a part of things I need to be fulfilled. If we exist, it could be a discontent in me when I still have some way to accomplish it. We are called to be a different person, still remember? And we have a new endeavors to pursue. We would like to have this godly identity, and which has been called, and we are no longer the same. As God given us all this knowledge of God, He called ourselves to be like Him. This is where we find growth. During this process, we will feel discontent, because we are not up to the part yet. What about us? Are we craving? Are we part of this craving group or this growth? Second Peter mentions that not necessarily all Christians in this tribe is belong to this group because some people has not prepared for that. Verse nine said, "But who?" 
Whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sin. It mentions in totally another group of people. That's, they, they've been described as nearsight blind. There is another group of people who don't want to make any change. So what would they do? They will pretend not to see any godly things. It is a completely different scenario. These people should see the knowledge of God like the rest of the people. However, they choose to pretend nearsighted, blind, or being forgetful. It does not mean they were born blind or empty-minded. It refers to those people who have all the knowledge, but they refuse to act. The situation is so serious that they don't want to accept their identity, which is they have been cleansed from their past sins. They could have been forgiven, but they chose to forget about the grace and try to live in a kind of sinful life that is the same as before the conversions. Verse 9 and verse 10 said, Therefore, my, uh, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your callings and election. So if you do these things, you will never stumble, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This passage encourages us to make every effort. Make every effort to confirm our calling. So like we truly understand the word confirm is like we, there is like something happened, but in order to make sure that things really exist, we need to show it. We make an reservation and then we like to conf confirm the reservation we have made two months ago. We call um, the concierge, and then we just try to call the receptions to make sure, okay, whether that things really happen. And how can we confirm? How can we confirm our calling? And this is what the scriptures say. We need to try very hard to be godly. The scriptures say, you will protect us from stumbling. So it's almost like you have been, have the knowledge, but if you really not trying very hard to do it. Either way, you give up or you stumble. It will help us to receive a warm, very good welcome to the eternal kingdoms of God for those people who truly practice it. The scripture warns us that that is a group of people like this who does not want to try hard. They could be the group of people who stumble. And he also extended the discussions of this to the qualifications of entering God's kingdom. I don't think it, it is necessary for us, as we were talking about spiritual growth, um, and we stopped a little while to make a theoretical debate about who can enter God's kingdom and who could have been saved based on just this passage. However, I guess this is a good link between all these kinds of elements that I've just brought up, and I just want to close our sermon today by calling all these things up to you again and see how the things apply to you. And this, that is a very good link between calling, life changing, life confirmations, and trying hard. Since God called his people to be somebody different, these changes could be confirmed when God's people is trying very hard to live up to it. As we are part of this tribe, have we ever tried very hard to live up to it? For you, as being like a seasoned Christians for so many years, when we reflect, have we been like trying very hard and trying to be living up to that identity. And now as we think that we will say, yes, we do have this growth, we'd like to close it with this encouragement from Paul at Ephesians 4.1. As a prisoners for the Lord, then I will urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Francis, 
I will encourage us to think. Let's live up to what we have been calling for. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your love, and you just call us up with your love. May you just encourage us to move further, as we would like to try very hard to live, live up to what we have been learned every single week. We practice it, and then we will have experience this new life that you would like to prepare for us for a long time. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. May we all rise. And we sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. the benedictions. Father God, we thank you for the time that we worship together this morning. May you bless us with your word. May you bless us with your life. Breathe in us with your words and encourage us to live to the furthest and which is so closest to the life which is so much like you. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all until the end of day. Amen.